Let's go to the house of the Lord. Let our feet stand in your gates. Let us go to... Hey, National Park Church here for another Wednesday night. It's actually going to be Paul's last Wednesday night because don't mind. I'm out. Got to go to school, man. <laughs> I can't, I can't do the, I think it's, I mean, if we record on a different day, then yeah, but, but, uh, Tell gotta, the truth. I got to be at school. Tell him the truth. I asked him if he wanted to record after school and he gave me a look like, are you crazy? <laughs> I should, I should want to record. But I'm not trying I to should. make him feel guilty. No, he's not. But, um, I'm not that tired. It's not as if it's, you know, the 11th, I'm, I'm in my 11th year of teaching, technically. Yeah. So I should, I, it's, I can handle it. Did they just talk you into it? The peer pressure of the screen? Yeah, yeah. That I can see their eyes. Their judgmental. Yeah, their judgmental, of what, uh, what we're going to talk about. I can feel your judgment. Yeah, yeah I might. We'll, talk we'll about see what it. happens. We'll talk about it. We'll see. What, let, yeah, let's <laughs> let's uh let's let's talk about it some more. All right, because I, I I like doing this. I think it's fun. Yep. I think it's great, and I think it's um for me it's a it's a blessing to have the interaction and the and the platform. Yep. Um, but um, but I think uh I think when there's great interaction and great questions to ask, yep. then then I, then it. It makes me feel good about I it. I think that's good. Absolutely. Yep. So we love you guys. Thank you all for joining us every Wednesday night. And Absolutely. We're continuing on the Sermon on the Mount, so will you open us up in prayer? And you can't stop the Sermon in the, on the Mount in the middle of it. No. you gotta, you got to go all the way through this thing. We're both preachers, so we don't stop yeah. sermons in the middle. Yeah, we, we do You know, we say in conclusion, and, and then we add three more points to it. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're actually landing the plane. Except for Taylor. He doesn't do that. He doesn't ever say in conclusion. He I just, just keep talking. He just keeps going. And I like that. <laughs> it's good. It's always good. So anyway. All right. So you're going to pray? <laughs> I'll pray. I'll pray. All right. Dear Holy Father God, we love you so much. And we thank you for uh, all that you have done for us. Um, we're so blessed to know that you love us and you care about us. And you know us. And I, I, I don't want to minimize uh, the fact that you know the you know the number of hairs on our head. That's how well you know us, and that is just amazing to be called your child and given us identity, uh, to be your kingdom representatives in a world that needs it so bad. Um, Father, we just want to be those those ambassadors, those representatives all the time to show love and compassion and peace and joy uh, to, to everyone we come into contact with. I pray that we can be challenged by Jesus' words. I pray that we can live out those actions uh, each and every day so that people can bring glory to you. Uh, Father, thank you so much for uh, Taylor and the elders and Patrick and, and all that they do in their ministries, uh, their wives as well. I ask that you continue to watch over their families um, such, such a, such wonderful families. Be with all the teachers and the administrators of all the school districts um, here in Hot Springs and, and across the nation. I pray that you continue to protect and guide and watch over uh, not only those uh, adults but the kids as well. Um, that you that you be with them uh, during this time, especially. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And so you guys are going to notice that this week is very similar to what we talked about in James on Sunday. So we talked about in James, James uh, argues that none of us human beings need to be in the seat of uh, God's judgment seat. Mm -hmm. That he, the one who can save life and the one, as James says, that can destroy life, he gets to make the judgments. I don't need to play that game. He would say we need to be doers of the law, or as he says in chapter 1 of James, we need to be doers of the word. So this week we're going to be seeing in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus talks about the same concept of judging. So I'm going to read it and then we'll start our conversation together. Jesus says this, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? 
but do not notice the log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your, out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eyes. So what do you think? <laughs> what's your, what's your, as we do each week, what's your summary statement or commentary on what, what's the main premise of this text? My, my statement with this has always been, um, just look at the mirror. Just really kind of, um, not, not so much, you can't, um, I think I think the word don't the phrase don't judge me has gotten a bad rep today. Yeah. Um, Unpack that a little bit. Why do you? Say well, that? okay. So so I make a decision or I say something, and somebody says, you know, like like Cambry's said it before, you know, particularly in jest, um, don't judge, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. Um, but I think what Jesus is trying to say here is a judgment based on wisdom. In other words, um, and I think he's also talking about condemnation at this point, too, a little bit. I think he's talking about, you know, um, it's easy for me to condemn a person from afar. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I think that's ultimately what he might be might be saying. I was looking up kind of the kind of the Greek word. Let me go back. Oh, no, let me go back. Um the, the Greek word for this, and trying to just get um, a, a, a say for it, um, properly to separate or distinguish, come to a choice decision by making a judgment either positive or negative. So, you know, he's, he's using that as a, a person makes a decision, um, and then I'm, I'm condemning them because of that decision. And of course, for the Christian, it should be based on wisdom. How do we do that? What you know? What does that mean for how we interact with with other people? And so, I I think it's just gotten a bad rep because we are to make decisions about things. Yep. We are to make decisions that reflect our relationship as representatives of of, of the kingdom, which is what we're talking about in the Sermon on the Mount. We've been talking about it, you know. Um, and and I think it's just gotten to the point where we can't even, in our culture, it's to the point where nowadays I think if we if we made a decision that people didn't like, we'd be criticized for yep. it. Yep. So I have to I have to basically give in or kowtow to another person's yep. judgment of me, yep. you know. And when Jesus, you know. Jesus is not doing that on multiple occasions. If anything, Jesus challenges people even more so. Yep. So anyway. Yep. And I, I think maybe the other side of the coin, and we talked about this a little bit on our, on our Sunday class, is don't judge me oftentimes gets used in a relativistic way. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. don't judge me. Don't judge me. I, I do that all the time. Like if I'm eating Oreos after dinner and just like shoving them in my face. Like, and Kara gives me a look, what am I going to say? Don't judge me. Right. Like you can't make a determination of whether that's healthy or good, or if that fits the diet that we talked about earlier. Like you just, you can't, um, I think that don't judge me means you can't make any kind of determination of this is a healthy way to live or not a right. healthy way to live. Right. Well, of course, as we talked about with James, the same applies to Jesus. Jesus is telling you, this is how you should live. So when he says, when you hate your enemies, you shouldn't do that, he's not saying, um, well, I'm not going to judge you. So if you decide you want to hate your enemies, that's cool with me. Right, he's right. making a judgment. Uh, but I think the, the key distinction is, why does he want that for the person? And then, and I want you to speak into this, the heart of the first two verses is the golden rule, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just, I'm right, you're wrong, I get to make a judgment, uh, you mentioned an impersonal kind of judgment. You're just, I'm condemning you from afar. Mm-hmm. It's how would I want to be treated? And uh, I think that reframes the question because even if I'm making a determination of right or wrong, I think all of us would say, if someone finds me at my most vulnerable moment, I don't want them to come in and go, all right, I got the sledgehammer. Right. Um, I, I'm going to want some grace, especially if I recognize my need for that. And then, but speaking to that, and then we'll, we'll process a little bit more. About well, that. I mean, um, 
it, it's just interesting to me nowadays that um, even the wisest decision in your prayerful reflection and your decision to your maybe the confusion about what to do about something and then you say okay this is what I've got to do and it just seems like everybody's like oh that's so you know lame or that's so dumb or something like that when in fact that decision that you made has been a prayer bathed decision it's been a, a decision that you've come to in your own understanding of how God operates in your relationship to other people I, I think more than anything else I, I think this this is also like like Jesus kind of qualifies this statement. This is a, and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye? Yeah. Like there is a personal relationship involved in this, yeah. and it's not so much. Well, I think we tend to look at it from you know yeah. from that rel- relativistic viewpoint. Instead, we're talking about a personal relationship. Have have you journeyed with that person enough? In order to say things to them that challenge them to grow or change, yep. or have you journeyed with them enough to to walk with them? That's good. Yep. You know, instead of saying, "Well, that you know," yep. for lack of a better way to put it, that's yep. just plain dumb. Yep. Yep. You know, um, how can we how can we maintain that personal relationship to the point where? You know, we're we're having those kinds of conversations without without the mindset of you know that judgment or that condemnation. Yep. You know, I've always made the comment, learn. Well, I haven't always made it, but recently I've learned to kind of adhere to this. You know, learn from the people you disagree with the yep. most. Yep. Try your. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to agree with them, but but I think it's helpful when we can step into that space a little bit more and say and say I'm not going to I'm not going to pass judgment I'm not going to pass condemnation on it I I want to listen I want to hear that what are your feelings about this what is what are your thoughts behind the way you think yep. I don't have to agree yep. but I'm certainly not going to you know especially do do what what this person in here is doing I've got a log in my own why would I and I think also too another part of this is it's made us, um, it's made us passive towards things. I, I think there's an opportunity to learn something in this where uh, we can actively challenge yep. those people we have that personal relationship with. Yep. Yep. Um, instead, what I think it's done is it's made us say, "Well, I'm judging." No, you're, no we're we're trying to make informed decisions about how to. Live out those king, these kingdom principles Jesus has been talking about this whole time. Yep. And I think on that, um, you, you brought up the imagery that he's using. Uh, for us, we come to the Bible um, very stoic and seriously, and mm. it's supposed to be funny. Like, we're supposed to it's, look at this person and go, right. One, how do they even see the speck in their eye? They're they're ramming everything in the room because they got this big log. Mm-hmm. And so, maybe for our context, and I guess I'm on the food illustrations today but it's like someone going to a restaurant and they got a triple cheeseburger with bacon on it and fries and they got an extra side and they got the largest um carbonated beverage you could have and they look over at their friend and go oh using ranch on your salad today (laughs) going ranch today it's supposed to look like that where you go right look at your plate right like look at your plate right um not Hey, if y'all are both journeying together and y'all have agreed upon we want to be on this diet and we're pursuing that, that you may say, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable and you're going to hold me accountable. But the image he has is somebody who is so Mm non-self-aware that they're Mm -hmm. criticizing someone who themselves is not even coming close to living into practice. Uh, I would say uh, there's that phrase that we we talk about when someone pokes fun at one another. Mm -hmm. Like You need to be able to take it. If you can judge all over the place, but someone says, "Hey Taylor, I I love you, but I don't think this matches up," and and you have you have the spec moment, are you willing to say I can be corrected? Mm-hmm. I think that's mm-hmm. if you can be corrected, my guess is you're going to do a much better job of correcting other people. Absolutely, yep. and and I think I, I think that comes with relationship. I think that comes when 
not as if one person is trying to step over another person. That's that's the, you know, I got a huge old log pointing out of my. I can knock you in the head with it if yep. I want to. Yep. You know that that's not what we're ta- what we're talking about here is finding that that line or that area where we can come to some sort of mutual understanding that builds each other up within this process, not not tears each other down. Yep. You know. And I think that's that's drastically important here because, um, you know, we can we can tear each other down without even you know. You've always heard the term passive aggressive. Yep. That I mean, that can be dangerous territory as much as just the blatant disregard. Yep. Um, for someone for someone else and how they're trying to live. And you talk about this a lot. There's um, there's this combination in church life of invitation, which is say, hey, come follow like come journey with me, and mm-hmm. then challenge. Um, and I think have some self-awareness makes it really hard to ever challenge. And I, and I think we just have to be honest. Most of us don't trust that when we're in a moment of somebody challenging us, they actually care about us. Mm-hmm. And you need mm-hmm. to ask yourself the question, mm-hmm. uh, especially, and I feel like I pick on these people all the time, so you need to defend <laughs> them. The, I just say it out is kind of people. Right, right, right. Uh, right. Well, just saying it how it is doesn't always mean you're doing it in love and doesn't actually mean that you need to say it. And so you need to ask yourself the question, are there areas in my life where I need to do some probing? And then why do I want to say that? Because as we said on Sunday, the dirty little secret is oftentimes when I am harshest in my condemnation, it's an overflow of my own insecurity. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. I'm going to pick out your rain dressing because I'm actually, I have some sense that there's some disorder in my, in my plate. Um, I think the same. There's some disorder in my life, but I want to project that on everybody else. Absolutely. Because if everybody's looking at the other person, then they're certainly not looking at me. Yep. yep. And and I can get away with it easier at that point. Yep. You know, um, I, I like what Jesus says at the end of the, you know, hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye. And and I think a lot of times we've we've framed that, that word hypocrite it's an actor. Yep. This person doesn't need, you know, help. Yep. This person doesn't need challenge. Yep. This is the person that's standing above the other person. Yep. Um, they're acting like they need that kind of relationship. Yep. You know, um, or they're acting like they don't need it. That's that's the better, yep. you know. And I think Jesus is saying, listen, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. Have the kind of relationships where... Um, where they mean something, where the, where both opinions, because um, opinions are opinions. Yep. They're just opinions. Yep. Taylor and I have different opinions. Uh, Patrick and I have different opinions. There's a lot of opinions flowing around. We, we don't have to agree, but we can certainly walk into that space a little bit. Yep. You know, and journey, it's just all about relationships. Yep. And, and um, I think that's important. And I'm not going to... Uh, you know, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Mm-hmm. People that aren't going to be like you're talking about. People that aren't going to be self-aware. People that aren't going to be concerned with your betterment or your contentment. Not necessarily even contentment, but just that mutual edification. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm. I'm I don't. Yep. I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that. Yep. You know, I'm going to move forward with the people yep. that don't see eye to eye with me. I mean, I've had conversations with people that have vehemently disagreed with the way that I think about it. But we had a conversation, yeah. and it was civil, and it was awesome. And I totally respect yeah. those people. Yeah. They didn't come and say, well, you're absolutely wrong about this and that. They came in and they said, well, how, do you, you know, how are you making sense of this particular yeah. mindset? Yeah. And that was, that was cool. Yeah. One of the best, I'll never forget it. Yeah. Great conversation. And they totally thought differently about it. Yeah. They didn't agree with me. But but I didn't have to see it their way, and they didn't have to see it my way, but we were willing to step into that. Yeah. And if you're going to engage in that, I would say, do the Pharisee check. Mm-hmm. Am I going into that conversation already predetermined that here's the five things I'm going to say because I want to trap that person? And mm-hmm. if I can trap them, then mm-hmm. I can... I can that, that becomes an unhealthy way of engaging with this. So I think there's two pitfalls that we can... We can have the pitfall, number one, of, well, community doesn't matter because each of us individually gets to do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. With no, we, None of us has any right. specs. 
it's just my decision. I don't actually really need the community unless the community sees everything the way that I already see it. Mm -hmm. No, it's interesting at the end that he says, you're doing this for the good of your neighbor because you're going to be able to take the speck out of your eye. That's right. But the assumption, at least as I understand it, that Jesus is, is using is, if you've done the work of getting a log out of your eye, you're very, very humble at that point. Oh, It's like a very, it, it would be like the Apostle Paul a couple days after the Damascus Road going in there and saying, yep, you don't know your Bible. Yep, you can't be part of the church. Oh, <laughs> And everybody looking at him going, dude, you literally were killing us a few days ago. Right. And now you want to be part of this right. and you're kicking everybody out. It just would not be self-aware. I think there's a kind of humility that you have to have if you've walked through the taking out the plank in your own eye. Uh, and then, but I would say the other is, uh, we said you could fall in the trap of being in isolation and relativism. The, the second one, I think, has to do with this idea of, oh, sweet, Jesus snuck it back in at the end. So I still get to judge people. Like, I still get to lay the hammer down on it. Uh, if that, if you get giddy over that opportunity, there's, um, there's a really, a lot of popular YouTube videos and it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican, this Christian perspective, not like, you'll see it all over the place. Ben Shapiro slays liberal, oh, liberal oh, Democrats oh. or, um, you know, uh, Mark Lamont Hill slays ultra conservative Republicans or Christian apologist slays Islamic teacher. And you right. go, okay, is that really the way we want to be talking about this? This combative, I'm going to destroy you. That's my posture. I think that's why people have the default of like, just don't judge me. Like if you're going to come in here with this heavy hammer, not relational at all, I, I can do without that. And I, I think a lot of Christians haven't also been able to name, we got a pretty messed up past too. Like we didn't come 2000 years without certain things that we did really wrong. And mm. so that should create a sense of humility. Uh, Amen. One of our apostles is Peter. If that guy got in, not because he was this perfect person, but because Jesus gave an extended forgiveness. And if we all think we got in differently than Peter, then we don't understand the gospel. We got in because God chose to love me when I was that's broken. Right. And if right. that's the case, I can look at Paul and say, hey, we're fellow journeyers trying to figure out how to live more fully into grace. Yep. I think that's a very different way to engage with this conversation. That's a great... Why can't we offer grace? I mean, that's really ultimately what it comes down to. That's really ultimately what Jesus is saying. Yep. Um, why can't we just offer a little more? And, and Patrick and Taylor and I were just talking earlier. It's not so much, under, it's understanding. Yep. I just thought about that as, as we were talking. Yep. Just a little helpful bit of that, pulling that plank out of, out of our eye is a little understanding goes a long way. Yep. Step into that. We we make we we make it cliches. Walk a mile in that person's shoes. Yeah. Step into their shoes just a little bit. Um, instead of just making just a quick, I'm gonna destroy you with this yeah. way that I'm thinking. You know, um, this lightning bolt of knowledge or lightning bolt of, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna own you kind of attitude. Um, it's just so not helpful. Yeah, absolutely. But but you know, you're dealing with, you know. I could do that yep. very easily and unhealthily, and I did it. Um, and so the thing that's been helpful to me is, number one, that statement I made earlier, learn from those you disagree with the most. Like To me, that's like an intentional step towards that person. Yep. Let's, like it's an intentional, okay, I want to learn more. I don't understand it all. Yep. And we've talked about tons of stuff that we don't necessarily agree with. But you know, I'm hoping that my attitude has been one that has said, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think about that the same yep. way I used to, yep. you know, and you're, and when you do that, you're pulling that plank out a little bit further. Yep. You're pulling that as what I think the ESV says log. Yep. Um, mine says, yeah, mine says log. Yep. New, New living says log, log or plank. Yeah, yeah. Just a huge, yep. huge thing of wood. Um, my dad always said it was a two by four. Yeah. <laughs> That was a two by four coming out of your head. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important when we, especially in church, there's so many issues that we could spend time talking about. Yep. And and I've got my, you know, I've got my biblical army. It's all wrapped up. We were just talking about that. Yep. You know, uh, I've got them all wrapped up. 
you know, I can throw a monkey wrench in just about anything. Yep. And and one one guy asked me uh, a month ago, he said, "Where's that gotten you?" Hmm. Yeah. And that's a you know that confrontation, that sort of debating, that sort of you know, where's that gotten you? Yeah. Not very question. far. Yeah. You know, um, so I I think that Peter actually is a really good test case, um, and this is like every other conversation. It requires wisdom. So I can't give you a list of, if this person is doing this, this is the five right, things you have to say. Right, right. And I'll give you two stories that you should keep in your mind. And I think they'll help us to, to process through whether my act is a form of judgment or what that person needs. Um, to kind of Because there's going to be one story where there's confrontation and there's going to be one story that we would say it's just grace. Mm -hmm. Not that confrontation can't be grace, but that's how we'd see it on the surface. Right. First is Jesus at breakfast with Peter. And... This is after his resurrection. Uh -huh. Peter is messed up big time. Like he denied Jesus three times. Now, I think a, a person who's really committed to judgment, they need to get the tongue lashing. And they need to walk Peter through, how dare you? I said I was establishing my kingdom. We talked that very night. And you had the audacity to tell me that you would stand with me even to the point of death. But Jesus says, what have I been doing yeah. these last three years? Yeah. And yeah. just lay yeah. into him. Yeah. Peter wept after it happened. Yeah. He's not in a place where he needs to be chastised more. He needs to be healed. And, and through the... Restored. Um, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Peter, do you love me? Restores him back. The three denials are reversed into the three affirmations of faith. So good. Second case is in Galatians chapter 2. And I don't want to steal my thunder because I know we'll preach about it in the sermon series we're doing. But... Peter had been eating with mm -hmm. the Gentiles, mm -hmm. been having meals with them. Then this group of people from the Jewish sect of Christianity start hanging around, and Peter gets a little shy about eating with the Gentiles. He becomes ex he excludes them from table fellowship. Well, in that moment, Paul comes, and we would say, wow, that seems a little harsh. He laid the hammer down. I want to say this is why I think it's actually healthy. Peter needed to be shocked into realization, mm -hmm. and Paul's not coming from Look how much better I am than you. Right. Paul's right. coming from, man, I know, more than anybody know that we get in by faith. Like, we don't get in by our perfect perfection of works of the law. And so when Paul comes in very emphatically, like, Peter, you're being a hypocrite. Yep. I think that's a taking a speck out moment, not an arrogant, look how much better I am mm -hmm. than you. Mm -hmm. I think you have to use that discernment. There may be times where Paul needs to come and say, you're not treating Kara well. And I love you too much to not say anything. Right? Yeah. But there would be a moment if I came to him and I said, man, I'm really failing in my, my marriage. I think I need to grow. I have these problems. And he goes, yeah, you're right. Like, I, you're terrible. Like, no, man. It's not going to work. Right. So I, I think that's it. Those yeah. are helpful ways to think through what is my motivation and is it a Paul Peter type moment? Uh, and you better believe Paul has to love Peter for that to work. Or is it a Jesus restoring Peter type moment? Absolutely. And I think knowing which one we're in can save us from making a lot of mistakes. And that and that takes relationship. The, the this takes relationship. This takes, you know, the opportunity to say, hey, we're here to help each other. We're not against. Yep. You know, and when we become like that totally unaware yep. of someone else's circumstance, yep. then God forgive us. You know, we need we need to come with that at the at the first part instead of just saying well, you, you're a terrible Christian, and you, how dare you think this way, and all this kind of stuff. Stop with that. Start with grace. Start with grace. And I think that's, I always tell the kids that. My, my kids, well, start with kindness. Amen. Yeah. Don't, you know, and and it needs to happen more often, but more times than not, no. it's it's not been the case. So And so this is not specifically talked about in the text, but I think in the light of Scripture, we can we can make this point. One of the hardest things about judgment is the church sometimes is a place where your identity can never change. It's amazing. I won't say who, but I've talked to church people. It's not an NPC, but they go, oh yeah, she's the person 40 years ago who had a child out of wedlock. Mm. And you're like, mm. you're still talking about that? Right. Um, right. I think the key is when Peter repents, and says, I'm not going to do this anymore. Paul doesn't say 10 years later, yeah, he's the idiot who wouldn't eat with the Gentiles. Right. Like, we don't let people 
participate in new creation. We don't do the Jesus moment. Jesus doesn't have any interest in Peter sitting and wallowing for the rest of his life, going, yeah, but at that moment, that crucial moment, I denied him. At that crucial moment, no, Jesus wants to say, no, you're healed. Yeah. You go, you're go. Good. Why, 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 do you, why do you think Peter could stand up on Pentecost and do what he did? It's because Jesus took the time yep. not to rebuke him, yep. but to bring him to, to bring him back into the fold. Yep. Yep. Man, whoo, Jesus is good at that. I think it's so important. It's wonderful. And so I think we have to ask ourselves the question, are we a place that creates space for us not to always go back to the spec? Mm. And, and, and ask yourself, like, if someone makes a mistake in this community, is that going to be who they are for the rest of their life? Like, if, if that's who they are for the rest of their life, then that's a judgmental community. Every Amen. story... In the body of Christ is what Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I once was this, but I've been washed. I've been cleansed. I've been sanctified. I've been made new. Everybody, every Christian story is a new creation story. Nobody comes in and goes, yeah, I didn't need any cleaning up. Everybody needs the bath of baptism. Amen. And so that is this principle that says, I'm not going to be arrogant. Because I know what it's like to need to be invited into a new way of thinking, a new way of living. So when I see somebody in that moment, I rejoice. And they're like, yeah, but I, I'm not worthy enough. And I go, absolutely. You're not worthy. I'm not worthy enough. Paul's yeah. not worthy enough. Yeah. This isn't about worthy. It's a. It's about uh, grace. I, I love what you said. That's great. It's just, it's just saturated in that. It's uh, And it's, you know, the willingness to step into that space. And and we've talked about this, and Patrick preached on it, and, and you've mentioned it on several guys. We worship a God that is vulnerable. I, I just hope one day we can be as vulnerable with each other. I just hope one of these days that we're even willing to say, I got this going on with me. I, I, need, your, I need your strength. I need your courage. And, and um, I hope and pray that that continues to be something that we do yep. uh, as the body of Christ. Yep. You know, we, we're, not, we're not wanting... We're not, we're not wanting all the dirty laundry out there. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the willingness to step into that space yep. uh, with people um, and, and and not just, you know, not just avoid it, yep. but confront that together and walk together in that and, and be strengthened together yep. in that. I think there's a lot of parallels between AA, NA, and discipleship in the church mm -hmm. uh, because there's a vulnerability of when you walk in, like, you don't feel judged because it would be like the person who has the plate full of food and is trying to judge you because you have a place, plate full of food. Like, they recognize, like, I've, I'm broken too. Mm -hmm. And I think if we understand the teachings of Jesus and Scripture in general, we would say that is the church. Everybody recognizes, like, I'm an addict in some sense. I'm broken because of sin. I need to grow. I'm, I haven't reached completion, which is holiness, is this complete form of being what Jesus wants me to be. Yeah. Um, and so that's a safe place. Then like AA and NA to say, Hey man, call me. Yeah. Cause I need you to be strong. Yeah. We need to be strong together. Yeah. But how different is that then? You're a terrible human being. How would you do that to your wife and to your family and to your kids? And we're going to stand on the truth and, and, and start <laughs> wait. No, no, no. We're, we're people of like, yeah, we know brokenness. We're not scared of brokenness because we see it in our own life. Can you journey with me? Can I t can I tell a personal story about it? I, we had an NA group uh, in Oklahoma um, uh, where I was preaching, and I went in there. I was nervous to go in there at first because I I don't have a drug problem. I don't have an alcohol problem. Um, some of those people do, and of course AA is different than than NA when it's more specific to yeah. alcohol. But I went into our NA group on several occasions, um, two or three times a week. I would go in there. Um, and I was nervous about it because, you know, I was, uh, well, it's in a, yeah. well, I sat down and the leader who I knew and had gone to church with us on a few occasions, uh, I said, can I come in? And he said, he said, are you perfect? He goes, I said, no. He said, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I sat down and, and I said, well, I don't have any, I don't have a drug problem. He's like, and, and he kind of yeah, but you're still broken. And I was like, yep. And then it got around to me, like they, they all say their name. Hi, my name is Paul Castleman. And and when it came to me, I was like, uh, hi, I'm Paul Castleman. Uh, 
uh, I'm a jerk. <laughs> Which, I'm not laughing as I believe it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just no, no, no. Just a, it, and it was hilarious to them because they all knew I was the preacher of that church. They all knew that. And for me to sit there in that group and say that with them and to affirm that, not only in myself but in them, I cannot tell you the relationships that came out of that and the fact that, you know, this one lady, she was like, you know, I thought you were the worst. And, then, uh, you know, a month later, she's like, you're the best ever. You know, yeah. it was cool, you know, and just to be a part of that vulnerability and all that kind of stuff, I think I, I think we need to, to come to grips with that as a church yeah. just a little bit. I think it's so good. And it leads us, and we'll conclude with this, um, there's something really strange about the story of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like, we're so used to him saying, I didn't come to heal those who are well. I came to heal the sick. He's saying, he says it to the Pharisees. You probably don't need to be part of my team if you're perfect. Yep. How weird is that? Yep. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, the sin's not the problem. The illusion that you don't have sin is going to be a much greater barrier than the sin. That's it. Well, that's a radical reconceptualization of what, what's going on here. Yep. And so... Um, there's always healing for sin. But if you're unwilling to do like you do and say, I'm broken, I need Jesus as much as anybody in the room, Jesus says, man, I have a hard time healing that because you're not allowing me to come and heal you. I want to heal you. Jesus has, he's not afraid of your sin. And I'm not minimizing sin. He's just not afraid of it. Right. Because he, he took care of it. It's done. It's taken done. care of. Yep. Uh, what he's worried about is that you wallow in your sin and you don't participate in the newness of life. Amen. And so, uh, I think so many people, I, I, you see it in TV shows on popular level, well, I never darken a church, church door because, you know, look at me. And it's like, man, that's, Jesus would be like, come, come, come. That's, that's the person he wants. Yeah, come yeah. on in here. Yeah. Um, and we are all sinners that are learning how to become saints. Yeah. That's the posture of being part of the church. That's the only requirement you have. Are you a sinner who's at the, any kind of stage of trying to become more like Jesus? Amen. You're welcome. Come on in. Come. <laughs> so we won. Yep. Amen. So uh, I'm going to ask you to pray a second time. Okay. Because I have the power to do that. Uh, you do. <laughs> you do. He's the man running the camera. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to um, I'm gonna do something. We're going to just... Um, you going to look up a prayer? Yeah. I'm going to pray the, the Lord's Prayer. Okay. Can I do that? Yep. Um, what? No. Oh, it's six. <laughs> I was on five. I'm sorry. I'm judging you. I'm actually judging, judging you. Oh, There's a guy. I guess he, he should, should, he should know where it is. is. <laughs> I, went, I went from seven back to five. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today, give us this day, the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For yours is the power and the glory and the honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great week. Let our feet stand in.